in the middle of the 20th century, the first big issue was integration. Racial integration uh, was a priority of President Thomas Spragans, who became president of Center in 1957. In 1964, the first three African-American students enrolled as regular students. Sharon Gill Gaskins, Joyce Cross Marks, and Jim Davis became the first African-American students to graduate from Center College. Uh, when I came to Center, uh, I didn't know at the time that I was the only black male on campus and um, also didn't know that there was just two uh, African-American females who were enrolling at the same time. I didn't realize we were the first ones who were enrolling. The atmosphere at Center was um, pretty diverse. There was a, a, a very different um, uh, environment, if you will, depending on who you were interacting with. The interaction with um, many of the students was one of curiosity, perhaps, than, than anything else. And uh, like any environment, there will be people who will embrace that curiosity and who will uh, you know, embrace you as an individual and want to get to know you. There are others who were not nearly so willing to embrace. I arrived here in the fall of 1969. Center had an enrollment of roughly 715 students. Of the 715 students, there were 10 African-American students on campus, seven men, three women, the six of the seven men were athletes, so the athletic department was Center's enrollment vehicle to get African-American students on this campus. The men had uh, Max Cabinets, who was the dean of men, and Dr. Cabinets went out of his way to make certain that we were welcome on the Center campus, did things to, to make that environment very welcome. For the women on campus, there was a, a uh, dean of women who was on there. Uh, but her personality in terms of trying to create a build that type of environment uh, wasn't what Max Cabinets was as towards men. So we had a support network. Women didn't have that. If you really want to know about uh, life for African American females on this campus, you can either talk to Zenobia Milton, but what we call, call it, talk to Zizi, and she will tell you what it was like. I came to Center College in 1966. I had no idea that there was a problem at Center College. There weren't a lot of African Americans at Center at that time. It left me in a very, what I felt was a very hostile situation. We learned very quickly that in Danville, an African American couldn't get his hair cut in any of the shops. In fact, there was a, one shop owned by an African American with all African American barbers who wouldn't cut black people's hair during the course of the day. There was Martin Luther King and there were the pictures on television of people that looked like me and there was the water hoses and there were the dogs. You have to remember, when I came in 1969, was at the height of the Vietnam War and the protests. So the fall of 69 and the spring of 1970 on this campus, as on all college campuses, was an interesting time because there were big anti-war movements and students were active. They were involved in getting, doing things. And so, you know, my small part in terms of uh, being an activist was, you know, getting engaged in the litigation regarding the, the Danville barbershops. We decided, uh, several of us, uh, that we were gonna challenge them not cutting African Americans hair. It, it was a difficult time, you see. Integrating anything during that period of time was hard. It was hard on those that came first. When I was at Center, it was hell. I dealt with having been called the N-word and not retaliating. There were more of them than there were of me. Angry, yes. Hateful, yes. Bitter, yes. But I was going to get my degree from Center College. A lawsuit was filed in which there were three plaintiffs, Ollie Taylor, Tommy Smith, and Raymond Burse. We sued the barbershops and we eventually won that suit. 
And I take great pride in saying we desegregated all of the barber shops in the Eastern District of Kentucky. You are learning because you are seeing different people, different ideas, different backgrounds, and they're all able to come together learning how not to isolate people, learning how that people may not live like you live, they might not think like you think, they might not even dress like you dress, but they're people and they have something to offer. It has certainly changed since we were here. We see all kinds of races of students and ethnicities and it's a wonderful thing. Different colors from different places are so marvelous when you begin to really have conversation with them. I see all these different people. I never thought that this place would ever allow all these different people to come and learn. So Center, yes, Center is still a work in progress. They still must open up their doors, not the physical doors, but the doors of their mind.